Okay, I'm starting on the top. So uh, what I've done is I went ahead and chucked up my my phenyl spindle. I'm going to actually try to get both of them out of this. I don't know if I can or not, but I'm going to try it. And uh, I tapered the end. I know this is about an inch and an uh, about an inch and an eighth diameter here. So I'm just going to see. Okay, I know that'll fit. I'm just going to make a mark here that I can see. So maybe, maybe I won't have to keep picking up that that freshly finished piece of work there. So I'm going to pull my tailstock up. I don't really like the way that thing's mounted in the chuck. I'm going to use my tailstock until I can uh, actually flip this thing around because this right here will end up being my pin jaw uh, tenon once I get once I get it sized properly. So now I'm just going to try to size this down. Just a little. Okay, I've got me a good fit, a really good fit, and what I did, <clears throat> once I got my fit, I, I made this kind of long, okay, it's about a half inch long, I'll end up cutting that off uh, with a bandsaw or something later. All I really need is about, uh, you know, about a sixteenth of an inch, just as a glue, uh, glue surface inside, but what I did, I took my skew, once I got it fit, and I undercut in here. You have to make that undercut or else you know you'll have a gap. So anyway I got that undercut. Now what I'm going to do since th this is going to be the top of the ornament is I'm going to go ahead and shape part of the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and shape part of the bottom so that I can uh, so I won't have to worry later about getting getting tangled up in my chuck when I'm trying to turn. So I'm just going to do that now. And what I'm looking for is kind of a base uh, that goes into a cove. Really that's that's the biggest thing I'm looking for. Okay, well let's get this let's get this party started. Just using my 38 spindle gouge. Got my basic shape done. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm just gonna park this off and uh, just gonna park this off, and I'll begin all over again with the other part, with the uh, the bottom finial. So this is what I've got, and I can chuck that up, and I can work on the work on the front the top whatever what I want to do I'll just set that aside and then I'll get started on this one and I'll size it just like I did the top okay I'm just shaping some more a little bit more shaping got everything turned around What 
I'm going to do here is make a, a knob, a round top. Okay, I've got a 16th inch drill bit, and uh, I'm just going to drill right down through the middle. I'm just going to hold it with a pair of pliers. back uh, shortly when I get started dyeing this one okay we're just uh, we're down to sanding again <laughs> I'm sure you'll enjoy that but basically I'm just starting with 220 Sanding up really nice. I'll go ahead and hit 320, and then uh, and then we'll die. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna get ready to dye this, and uh, I'm gonna dye this red, which will be this color. Shake it up good. Find my brush wherever I put it. There it is. And I'll do do it the exact same way as I did before. I've got sawdust on the bed of my lathe, so this stuff's all water-based anyway, so I can get it loose if I need. I can take it out if I need to. We're just gonna put some red on here. Just see what see what we come up with. It really soaks that stuff up first coat. I didn't worry about water sanding this. I probably should have. 
but to tell you the truth, I forgot. But uh, if I see where the, I'll know now because it's wet. But if I see where I need to uh, go back and water sand and or wet sand, then I will. All right then. Get a little bit in here. There we go. All right. We are now. I'm going to let this dry for just a minute. And then I'll worry about uh, if I need to wet sand or not. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. Well, I haven't uh, I haven't put super glue on this one, and uh, I just think that uh, with all the these little corners and things, I just don't think I'll be able to get it on smooth enough. But I have wet sanded at uh, uh, 400 grit, so I'm going to try. I'm just going to put this polish on and try it. Make sure it's hooked up good. I'm just, I'm going to apply it. Let's slow the leg down a little bit. I am picking up a little bit of the dye. I'm not too worried about picking up some of it, as long as some of it stays. <laughs> I've got some eyelets I need to put in there before I before I take it off the lathe. I'm gonna put it in first. Okay. So now I've got my friction polish on. It's still I'm sure it's probably cured by now, but I'm gonna. Okay. Well, here it is with the eyelet and all. I think uh, maybe my eyelet may be a little big, but. Uh, that was the smallest one they had at the hardware store. I was looking for a brass eyelet, and uh, that was the uh, smallest one they had. So that's what I bought, and uh, it looks small then, but it looks awful big on the uh, on the ornament. Well, I've just got started working on the icicle, and uh, you know I'm just kind of trying to rough it down pretty good right now and uh, maybe get a, a good shape on here basically I'm looking to sort of mimic mimic the bottom of this I, I want it to look similar to this but going into a an onion shape here and then on into a, a long uh, kind of a long thin section I'm not uh, I'm not gonna try to get it thin like I did, uh, like I was trying to do with the walnut bowl or the walnut finial a uh, week or so ago. But uh, I just want to bring this down uh, so it'll look nice hanging on the Christmas tree. They have to be able to deal with some type of abuse, you know, every year being on the Christmas tree. You can rip this down, my bowl guys. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my tail stock get it back out of the way and I'm going to go ahead and start trying to work on this. These things are a lot of fun. Uh, of course you make as much firewood as you do finials, but uh, I do anyway. Okay, I have to bring my tail stock back up to get that centered back up good. I'm just going to try to do some cutting with it on there. I just want some time of tip on here. It's going to 
gonna look nice. I'm just kind of sanding as I go up to about 400 grit because I really don't want to get back down into this area anymore. But what I need to do now is go ahead and mark out where I want like the bulb and uh, and all that where I want everything to, to start and end. So my base will be about here and I'm going to go into a cove that will be probably to about here. And then I want my bulb to be kind of big, but not too big, you know. And then it'll taper into all of this. So let's uh, let's see what we we'll get.
like a striper. But you have to be very careful to support behind it like this. Okay, I'm getting down to the onion part now. Hope I don't lose it. I'm trying to shake up the bottom a little bit. I'm just reducing my diameter down. Okay, this is what I've ended up with before before the die. Uh, I think it looks nice. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and die it. And I'm going to put the finish on it. And we will be done with this. Well, I have to assemble it, won't I? Okay. Well, I'll be back when I get ready to assemble it. These steps are just the same as uh, I've already shown. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you probably don't want to watch all that again. But uh, I'm just going to dye this. I'm going to finish it. I won't be using the super glue on this. Uh, just because there's so many nooks and crannies, I'm just worried that I'll, you know, I'll get streaks and all in it. But right now I've got it sanded to 400 grit. So uh, we should be good to go. I'll be back in just a little while when I start assembly. Okay. Well, we got all our pieces made. Now all we've got to do is put them together. And I'm going to use medium thick CA. I'm just going to apply it to the bottom here of each uh, tenon. And uh, I think I may have got a little too much on there that time. But this is the bottom piece. Put the CA off. 
Off of there. Okay. Good thing with that finish that I used the uh, friction polish, it's got wax in it, so <laughs> see they don't stick to wax. So that's a good thing. Now for the top, I I didn't trim these down. Uh, I didn't really see a, a need to do it, so uh, so I didn't do it. Okay, now for the top. There we go. Really good, nice and tight. Make sure I get all the CA out from around it. <laughs> I like it. I think it's pretty. All right. Well, that looks uh, that looks really nice. I really like the friction polish. Well, okay. Here we go. Nice little Christmas ornament. Uh, I think anybody would like to have hanging on their tree. It's nice and lightweight. Uh, we were very careful to get, you know, about a sixteenth inch wall thickness around the globe, and uh, it really makes that thing lightweight. Won't have any problems hanging that off of its off a of Christmas tree. You got a long finial, fairly fine. Uh, but really, you don't want a real fine finial on uh, something like this because it, it's going to get used and handled. So, uh, you know, you'd have to be really careful with that. One thing I would change would be the eyelet. Uh, the eyelets that I that I've got are uh, actually they're a little large, you know, for for this application. But uh, it'll work. But I'm sure you can find smaller ones somewhere else. Uh, I just went to my local hardware store and needed some eyelets, and uh, that's what they had. That was the smallest they had. But uh, put ended up putting my burn marks in right here. And uh, but anyway, the uh, Eric Anderson's little friction polish. It looks great. It looks good. Uh, kudos to him for uh, coming up with that and uh, sharing with everybody else how to make it. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> hey, you all have a Merry Christmas. I'm not sure if I'll get another video on here before then or not, but uh, I've actually got a couple more projects planned, so maybe I'll get another one on before then. Uh, but if not, you all have a Merry Christmas. Go make you a Christmas ornament. Have a good day.